No one expected a Swedish jet to embarrass America's most expensive fighter, but that's exactly what just happened in Canada's skies. For years, Canadian pilots trained, flew, and fought alongside the F-35, the jet marketed as the world's most advanced war machine. It was stealthy, digital, and cost more than entire air bases. But when the Gripen E arrived, light, lean, and unmistakably Swedish, something unexpected happened. The pilots started talking. They whispered about agility, about the way the Gripen seemed to think with them, not against them. And soon, a quiet realization spread through hangars and briefing rooms. This little jet was doing things the F-35 couldn't, at least not without burning a hole in the sky and the budget. In a world where bigger and pricier usually wins, Sweden decided to fight differently. While the US poured hundreds of billions into the F-35, a single-engine stealth machine so complex it needed its own army of mechanics, Saab built something else, a fighter that ordinary pilots could master, maintain, and deploy anywhere, from frozen Arctic runways to rough roads in the forest. When Canada opened its long-delayed fighter competition, the usual names lined up, Lockheed Martin with its F-35, Boeing with the Super Hornet, Dassault bowed out early, and somewhere in the background, Saab appeared. Critics laughed. They said a small Scandinavian country couldn't possibly compete with the US defense machine. They said the Gripen was too simple, too small, too cheap. They were right about one thing, it was cheap, but not in the way they meant. The Gripen wasn't designed to drain a nation's budget, it was designed to keep it safe, fast to repair, easy to fly. In war that matters more than fancy graphics in a cockpit. Still, the skepticism was brutal. Canadian defense officials were under immense pressure from allies to stay in the family, meaning buy American. For decades that's how the game worked. You wanted US protection, you bought US jets, but something about the Gripen challenge felt different. It wasn't backed by politics. The do with the Drodex Stimbams, but Bowden was back by Sked, by performance. And the turning point came during evaluation flights and simulated exercises, moments Canadian pilots still talk about quietly, off record. The Gripen felt alive. During mock combat drills, the Gripen E showed behaviors that left even experienced F 35 pilots stunned. It turned faster, recovered quicker, and perhaps most importantly, its electronic warfare system, the EWS-39, performed like a ghost in the sky. While the F-35 relies on stealth to stay hidden, the Gripen E does something more mischievous. It plays mind games with enemy sensors. It doesn't disappear. It confuses. To radar operators, it's like chasing a phantom that keeps changing shape. In one simulated intercept scenario, the Gripen system managed to spoof incoming radar locks, tricking an opponent's sensors into seeing multiple targets where only one existed. It was pure Swedish engineering wizardry. Less Hollywood, more chess. That's when Canada's pilots began to realize maybe this wasn't a contest between two jets. It was a clash of philosophies. The F-35 was built for dominance, to project power, to intimidate, to integrate into massive allied networks. The Gripen E was built for survival, to fight when outnumbered, to adapt, to win even when the odds said it couldn't. And in today's world, with drones, electronic attacks, and cyber warfare, survival might just be the smarter bet. Sweden's approach is almost poetic. They don't try to outspend superpowers, they outthink them. One engineer once joked, while others spent billions, we used our brains. It wasn't arrogance, it was truth. The Gripen program runs on efficiency. Every upgrade, every line of code, every bolt is designed to be modular, meaning a mechanic can swap out parts in the field without a massive base or a team of contractors. That's the kind of practicality Canada's Air Force understands, especially when operating in the Arctic, where logistics, not firepower, often decide who controls the skies. That efficiency blew away observers. It's the kind of jet that actually fits how we operate, not how someone else wants us to. And suddenly, the conversation in Ottawa began to shift. 
This wasn't about showing loyalty to Washington anymore, it was about defending Canada's own sky, on its own terms. But the Gripen's most shocking advantage wasn't its cost or cold weather ability. It was its brain. Saab designed the Gripen E as a digital platform first, a fighter second. It uses open architecture software, meaning Canada could customize it, upgrade it, even integrate local weapons without asking permission from a foreign manufacturer. That's independence, something no US jet truly offers. The F-35 for all its power, is locked down. Every update, every system tweak runs through the Pentagon. For allies, that's control disguised as cooperation. So when Canadian pilots saw how easily the Gripen adapted to different mission profiles, from Arctic patrols to NATO drills, they couldn't ignore what it represented. Freedom in design, freedom in use, freedom in defense. Of course, politics rarely reward the underdog. Despite the Gripen's performance, the official deal leaned toward the F-35. But inside Canada's Air Force, respect for the Swedish jet only grew. Pilots who flew both say the difference is almost philosophical. The F-35 demands obedience. It tells you what to do, when to do it. The Gripen E listens. It partners with you. One pilot said it best. In the F-35, you're part of a system. In the Gripen, you're still a pilot. That line hit hard, because it spoke to something deeper than combat performance. It was about identity. Canada's pilots wanted a fighter that understood their environment, their needs, their reality, not just a slot in America's global network. And that's why this story matters. Because it's not just about jets, it's about independence, trust, and smart design winning over raw power. Gripen's quiet victories, from radar duels to cold weather tests, expose something the defense world doesn't like to admit. The future doesn't always belong to the most expensive machine. Sometimes, it belongs to the one that works. And that's why, even after the official deal went to the F-35, pilots kept talking. They couldn't stop comparing. They couldn't unsee what they'd witnessed. A jet that cost less, flew simpler, and in many ways, performed better. The global impact was immediate. Brazil, already operating the Gripen, doubled down on its program. Hungary began expanding its fleet. Even NATO planners quietly started reviewing Sweden's data, realizing that agility and adaptability might matter more than stealth alone. And when Sweden finally joined NATO, it wasn't just as a small Nordic partner. It was as the country that built a jet good enough to challenge America's crown jewel. That's no small statement. In the end, maybe that's what makes the grip and e-story so cinematic. Not its price tag, not its looks, but its philosophy. It's proof that in a sky full of giants, there's still room for the clever fox who knows every path through the forest. Canada's pilots may not fly the Gripen officially, but they've already flown the idea behind it. That real strength isn't about size or stealth, it's about control, freedom, and trust in your machine. And someday, when the next generation of fighters takes shape, those lessons will echo in every design meeting, every cockpit, every decision. Because Sweden didn't just build another jet, they built a reminder that even in modern warfare, the smartest fighter still wins.